Hey guys, today I want to compare uh, failed games, um, except I want to use my own concepts. I want to fix them up. Uh, the reason why I have these two out though, I'm not going to include them. I know they were bad, uh, but essentially they've been fixed already. Um, so yeah, I mean, these games are good now. I don't want to obviously fix them since they're already good. Um, of course, at the beginning, these games were not very great. Fallout 76 was pretty infamous. Uh, <laughs> I mean, people paid so much money for, like... I remember, like, the Deluxe Edition or whatever it was called at the time. Um, it came with this duffel bag. And the duffel bag wasn't even a duffel bag. It was, like, some cheap knockoff duffel bag. <laughs> and it wasn't even, like, high quality. Definitely wasn't worth the money for how much you paid for it. Obviously, everyone knows cyberpunk um <laughs> all the glitches and stuff it had uh funny story though i actually when i did my playthrough uh long long way back i don't even know if i streamed it or not um but i i did play through the entirety of cyberpunk and i loved it i in case you didn't know at the time the ps4 version and this is like when i was playing it as well it actually was the worst version to play of cyberpunk <laughs> um so yeah, like the Xbox One version, it was actually better to play than the PS4 one. I played through the entire game, not one glitch, not one bug. I mean, I had a few things happen here and there, like sometimes when you're like riding like a bike or a car or something, you'll see like your hair appear in the camera and it kind of blocks your view. But I mean, there was workarounds, just going to third person since you're in a car. So, I, I mean, I had issues with it, but nothing game breaking at all, so... Definitely, I had a little bit of that. However, with like Fallout 76, I didn't play it really as much. I, I did it with like a friend a while ago. Um, not enough to really say anything about it. I, I mean, it was good. I, I didn't play it though when it was like bad. Because like nowadays they, they fixed it. Um, it's actually like a top seller now, surprisingly. But um, I got it for like 10 bucks at a shopper's. <laughs> So, I mean, hey, I'll take it. Uh, Cyberpunk, I, I do like what they did with the disc one. You get a whole bunch of stuff included, but I'm not going to bring it out because it's kind of it's kind of hard to put back together after, but definitely I'll check these. I'll, I'll recommend these games anytime. They're good games. Um, I mean, still questionable, but I know Cyberpunk, especially now it's got like the Phantom Liberty DLC. It's like... It's actually really good now, so <laughs> you guys could check that out uh, at your own will. Uh, follow, pretty good too. But anyways, let's get into these uh, failed games, and yeah, let's do it. So the first game I want to talk about is actually a very obvious one. I don't think I have to say much. <laughs> Anthem, yes. Uh, it's a shitty game, yes. I, I, I definitely know that. <laughs> I, I can't say much about it, though, um, simply because it's like, I, I didn't get far at all in the game. <laughs> I think I'm still in the tutorial, so um, I can't really say what I'd fix about it, but there's definitely, like, definitely things you could, you know, fix about it. Number one, of course, uh, let's uh, just remove that logo off of the game, or off of the everything about this game. Let's just keep Bioware, because... <laughs> At least Bioware is known for making some good games. I think the only thing that's fair to me to, to like say about this game is the one thing they should fix is the microtransactions. Because just off the stories that I've heard that this game has, it's just... Why? <laughs> why, why even? That's horrible because um, for people who didn't play it, one of the things I did hear they did was if you wanted to uh, like customize your mech in the game or anything you had to pay you had to pay for it all you couldn't earn any of them and well maybe maybe you could earn some of them but you had to pay for pretty much everything if you wanted to customize for you barely got to unlock anything as far as i'm concerned but um i mean one of the things about this game is the customization that's that's like one of the main things about this game and like <laughs> how do you how do you mess that up so i mean okay yeah <laughs> we do know how they messed it up so bad it's ea of course they did they're <laughs> greedy bastards over there so 
But I think that's the only thing I could really say. I didn't get far at all if I'm still in the tutorial area, but um, yeah, EA, make, make better games, <laughs> please. Speaking of EA, we got another, uh, more like a game series. Uh, I'm going to present you two games. Obviously, the NHL 24 I have on the bottom and NHL 22. They're the, they're the only two I own, but, so, yeah, I mean, I enjoy these games personally, but they have their issues, of course, we all know the number one, <laughs> EA, <laughs> other than that, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what I'd really change much about them, um, because I, I do actually personally enjoy these, I'm, I know a lot of people hate on the sports games, uh, I think, obviously, the number one, once again, I'd change is the amount of microtransactions in these games. Like, I mean, you pay full price. This is $90 for a game that's just going to come out another year after. <laughs> so, like, what's the point? Um, actually, you know, one large thing that I would actually change, which is actually included with the entire series, I would just make one game one NHL game, and then have it so it's updated every year with the new roster since instead of making, you know, like the next game, I mean, sure, it is EA. Why would they do that? They want money. <laughs> um, but, I mean, if we're not talking about money-wise, you don't want to earn money, that's what I'd do. Um, I'd just make one NHL game. I'd probably just call it NHL <laughs> and then just update it, pro well, every year. Uh, I'd update, I'd update, update the roster, and then once in a while, maybe, like, make, like, a, a sequel or something, like, NHL 2, <laughs> and then just have it for, like, probably the next console generation or something along those lines. I think that'd be much better instead of just having us pay $90 every year just to have an updated roster, and maybe in some cases, you know, have, have like, a, a new gameplay feature or something. Other than that... I mean, these both these games right here, they're the same game. <laughs> it's just one's a different year, updated roster. The other, other than that, I mean, there's some visual differences. Obviously, graphics. Actually, I wouldn't even say graphics are different. These have the same graphics. <laughs> but, you know, this is two games ahead. <laughs> other than that, I, that's really all you can change. That's one massive change I'd do. I, I could even tell uh, EA, I love how they plastered their name two times on this game. They have it obviously down there and then like uh, by the logo. Because, I mean, it is EA NHL 22. It's EA Sports. I just love how, if you look on this, they have NHL PA. But you don't see an electronics logo. Except for right there. You actually have to go to the back. And yeah, it's right there. You can see it again right there. Other than that... <laughs> Like, they didn't even do their normal logo for this one. It's just Electronic Arts, which is pretty plain and boring if you'd ask me. But, eh, I guess less name plaster on it. Maybe maybe they're like, okay, we don't like their, they, they don't like our name. So, let's get it out of here <laughs> before something happens here. Let me see if you guys could guess this game. Any guesses yet? That's right, it's Barbie. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's actually Contra Rogue Corps. This is the next bad game I want to talk about. Uh, I do have an alternate cover if you guys are wondering what the hell, what happened here. Um, this is just an alternate cover. If you if you actually open the game up here, you can just see the other side is just there. Don't worry, I didn't like spill coffee or something on this and I have to get like a, something printed off the internet. This is legit. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned anyways, who knows. <laughs> um, but, um, this game, I'm sure you guys may have all heard of, uh, Contra Rogue Corps, is a bad game. <laughs> this may surprise you, but I actually kind of enjoyed this game. This game was kind of nice. It was something different to play. But yes, it wasn't a pleasant different. <laughs> it wasn't like, I don't know, like, what's, what's a different game here? I'm trying to think. I know one. I enjoyed Tribes of Midgard. I mean, this is like your normal survival game, but it does play and feel a lot different. It's not like this. Contra is bad. I would say the number one thing I'd change about this game 
is like I, I kind of see what they wanted to do. They wanted to take Contra to like a different playing field, but kind of have it feel the same still. Um, so they, they made it sort of like a like a top down shooter instead of having the side scroller. But I think what they should have actually done with this one is just to make it a third person shooter. Either that or keep it original and just do a side scroller. But I think this game would have been better for what it was going for as a third person shooter. That's the one thing I, I would like change a lot. I would also change the characters voices because a lot of them just annoyed the shit out of me. <laughs> Throughout the entire game I was just annoyed kind of playing it. Um, other than that, I mean, I, I actually enjoyed it myself. Uh, actually, there's one thing I do want to point out here. That boss's design is fucking awesome. <laughs> other than that, I mean, like, there's a better view. Other than that, it's like, these designs are kind of, kind of plain, to be honest. I don't know, I, I don't, I never played any of the original Contras. Um... I I, there, I know there was one on iOS as well. Um, I believe also on Google Play Store. There was like a, a newer one than even this. Um, and it actually it actually probably is good too because it's once again a side scroll. They went back to the original. Uh, it's decent graphics too. It's not like it's a remake of an old game. As far as I'm concerned, maybe it is. But I mean, I don't know why they would port it to iOS and not like consoles <laughs> unless this is why because it's like. Oh, this game was bad. Let's not put it on PS4. <laughs> but I I did like this game. Uh, I, I mean, I never beat it, but nor did I get far in it. But I'm actually thinking of going back to this. Uh, for I, I'm sure you guys probably may not know quite as much. Um, but I do love going for platinum trophies uh, for, like, PlayStation and stuff. Um, uh, it, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, if you're, like, an Xbox gamer or something... Essentially what a platinum trophy is, is trophies for PlayStation. It's when you get all of the, as you guys, Xbox and PC players would know, achievements. <laughs> so I, that's what I like doing, and I think I want to go back and actually do this game. Um, but that depends. <laughs> Sometimes when games are very repetitive and, like, when they are when they get a little too difficult, when trophies, you know, like some trophies are very difficult... Uh, one of the examples, Final Fantasy games, very difficult if you know what I'm going with this. Um, I don't want to do it, essentially, so I, I might actually go back and play that one. I'm not sure, though, but anyways, that's what I would change about it. I'd make it, a once again, a side-scroller or a third-person shooter, and other than that, I, I thought this game was awesome. Oh, yeah, and also voice lines. You needed better people. It's either that or just don't do it at all. <laughs> The next game I want to talk about is actually one I played uh, not very long ago. I actually gave up on it too. You guys may may know where I'm coming from here. It's Deathloop. I I mean this game wasn't really a failed game. It, it was pretty good. And I mean even coming from a guy who didn't want to play it anymore, it was a good game. The reason why I stopped playing it was because the game was boring. It's definitely it, it's like. You're doing the same thing for hours and hours of gameplay. Literally the entire game is set around one place pretty much. Like, even like, you have like four different like regions that you explore, but they all feel the same. And there's only four. And you're doing so many like countless hours of doing stuff. So you're in like what feels like the same map for hours. And you're doing the same thing over and over again. Like, I get it. It's a loop. But, like, for a game that's about... I'd say about 30 to 35 hours in length. It is so boring. <laughs> so, like, it's definitely, in my opinion, one of Arcane's, I guess, second worst games. Since now they have Redfall out. Um, I don't really want to blame them on Redfall. Because I do also agree. Uh, I know a YouTuber once said this, um... I think Redfall failed because of Xbox mostly. Uh, they they kind of like wanted they wanted um, Arcane Studios to do a online only kind of game, which I mean is Deathloop is like that, but it's not like the way Redfall was. 
So I think that's kind of what happened with Redfall is this, well, this was on them. <laughs> I also know Bethesda, I believe. Yeah, Bethesda also helped with this game. So maybe, maybe I'm going to blame Bethesda on this too. So I'm blaming Bethesda on this game and I'm blaming Microsoft on Redfall. Other than that, I, I love Arcane because they made like Dishonored. I love Dishonored. One of my favorite games, which is one of them. One of my favorite games. I love Dishonored. I, I still got to play like the DLCs as well as the sequel for those games. But the first Dishonored was phenomenal. Great game. If you guys don't, if you guys haven't played it yet, go and play it. <laughs> I'm talking about Dishonored. Don't play Deathloop. Jesus Christ, get this out of here. However, the things that I want to change about this game. Well, I, I give it maybe some extra areas to explore. I'd also probably, for the type of game that it is, I'd actually shorten the, the length of it. Because essentially, if you guys never played Deathloop, you have to go and kill, I think it's eight visionaries. Uh, you have to go and kill all of them during this loop. Before you could kill them, though, you have to do a set of tasks in order to actually kill them. Because, I mean, you got to, like, find where they are and how to even get to them before you can kill them. You can't just run up and really kill them. I mean... Depending on who you're killing, sure you probably could, but you can't quite do that with everyone. But the reason why I want to shorten it is because it takes so long to do all the objectives for some of them. And killing some of them is actually really difficult too. Uh, the, the main one that I still haven't been to this day, his name is Alexis. And he runs a party, and that party has so many people in it. That sneaking around is impossible. And I mean, like, sure. Just going in gun guns blazing, you'll kill them eventually, right? Wrong. If you kill someone at that party, the objective fails and you have to restart from the first morning. And this happens at night, so you have to skip all the way back to nighttime just to try it again. So you have to sneak. And the only way you could kill him is once you find out who he actually is. And then you had to kill him, which doing that means you had to sneak around the party, find out something about him. So, like, the one I found out at first, you, you could, like, listen to this conversation these guys had at his party. And essentially, you could, like, find out what his favorite beer is, and then you had to kill him that way. It took me so long just to figure out his beer. And the first time I could actually figure it out, I didn't have the sound on, so I had no idea what they said. <laughs> I mean, I did have subtitles on too, but I wasn't paying attention because I like to sometimes watch like videos or something, but um, yeah, so I missed it. I had to restart because I had no idea what he's doing and I was just guessing the beer. And then, yeah, <laughs> once I figured it out, I went to kill him. And here's another thing I'd change. It had hackers in the game. I Once I actually figured out how to get his beer and I did all of that and I went to go kill him, I killed him. And it, for new players as well, you have to actually run back to your safe house. And then that completes it right there. I had to run back to my safe house. And as I was trying to run back, a hacker killed me and ruined my entire game. That was the last time I ever played Deathloop. <laughs> I gave up immediately on the game after I noticed there was hackers. You know, you want to know how I know there's hackers? I was on a private lobby. Which means I would have to invite people. To actually play my game. I didn't invite anyone at the time. And somehow people are just joining my game. So they're hacking into my game. Just to kill me. It is. Utterly retarded. <laughs> this game is. So I, I had to give up on this game. I'm happy I only spent like $10 on it. Because I got really far. So I, I think I got my $10 worth out of this game. But like come on. It's not even that old. And it has hackers already, and I'm playing on PlayStation. It's not even PC where it's like it's more prone to hacking, I, I, I guess. <laughs> but yes, so that's what I change about Deathloop. I, I'd, I'd actually like care for my game, so it doesn't get infested with hackers. At least that's one thing Call of Duty can say. The only time their games get infested with hackers is one. It's like games that are like ten years old. <laughs> so at least Call of Duty could vouch for that. Deathloop. What are you doing, man? The next game... It's Mortal Kombat. Yes. Mortal Kombat 1. I wouldn't say it's a failed game. 
But when it comes to Mortal Kombat, I'd say it's the worst Mortal Kombat. And that, that's coming from a Mortal Kombat, like, legend here. I, I mean, I wouldn't, I guess, maybe not legend. I love Mortal Kombat, though. <laughs> I... This game was bad. <laughs> so, essentially why this game was bad, uh, at least what I'd like to say, is it was actually supposed to be Injustice 3. So, this game, because it was supposed to be Injustice 3, they were working on that at first, and then they scrapped it. And then they decided to panic and make a shitty Mortal Kombat instead. Something I'd rather Injustice have instead. <laughs> um, I, the one thing, like that I found really bad about this game is the recent combat pack one. Oh my god. This game has the worst combat pack I've ever seen. I don't know if there's any characters on the back. No, they don't. But yes, the combat pack one is so bad. I I don't like any any guest character at all. That's something I've never said when it comes to Mortal Kombat combat packs. I've even like Mortal Kombat 11, I wouldn't say was absolutely the greatest, but it had at least memorable characters and characters that actually fit the game. <laughs> Mortal Kombat 1 has superheroes, which is like, I'm going to go back and say, I, I know it was supposed to be Injustice 3. So my theory is like, Combat Pack 1 was actually made for Injustice, which makes total sense now thinking about that because it's like, if you look at like Peacekeeper and stuff, like all of them are like basically dressed like superheroes. So they actually fit in justice since it's all like superheroes and villains and stuff. This isn't. <laughs> we need a combat pack 2 that is at least great. Like I'm talking, I want combat pack 2 to be like Mortal Kombat X level. Mortal Kombat X had like such good characters on it. Actually, I think they have a V on the back. Oh, right there. Look at those. All of those characters are dope as hell. There's actually more, but uh, it's probably not going to show the rest. There's a few. I think there's like one extra in that picture. But yes, Mortal Kombat XL had some of the greatest, most memorable DLC characters, I'd say. So if we could get one on that level, then this game would actually be okay. I'd say it would be probably just as good as Mortal Kombat 11. But, I mean, that's kind of one thing I'd say I'd change. Is Combat Pack 1, I want like a better combat pack. But I'd say the major thing I want to change is the Invasions mode. It is... The best way I could describe it, Invasions is garbage. So, before Mortal Kombat 1, like, was even like out. Uh, NetherRealm Studios, the creators of it said they wanted to bring back some old modes well we never got that we you know instead we got invasions as far as i know it's not a coming coming back sort of mode um never heard of an invasions mode it feels brand new but it it sucks <laughs> that's the best way i could describe it like mortal kombat 11 had towers of time which was actually fun because i mean it, it's you kind of have that in this game with like the, you get the uh, towers, um, the gateway towers, which is included in the invasions mode, but it's just not the same. It, at least with Towers of Time, like it was sometimes challenging, but it was very rewarding. So it was like always fun. You like, I had the most fun out of it. It's actually, I'd say Mortal Kombat 11 because of the Towers of Time. It's my most played Mortal Kombat game I've ever, like, ever. <laughs> and I, I love Mortal Kombat X more than both of those. <laughs> like, combined, too. Like, I love it so much. But Mortal Kombat 11 is my most played. Which kind of says something there, but... <laughs> that's probably the only thing, though, I'd probably change. Other than that... Oh, actually, there is one more thing. The... How do I explain it? The Fatal Blow system. Mortal Kombat 1... It takes the Injustice route when it comes to that, which, once again, sure, it was supposed to be Injustice 3, so they probably panicked, <laughs> just like, okay, we're gonna keep it in. The only thing that, like, I love, obviously, the moves and stuff they all pull off is always awesome, but the thing that I hate about the Fatal Blow system, they, ha they, play, they have to play, like, this small cutscene of you preparing to do it, 
which defeats the purpose of the Fatal Blow because then people know that it's coming. The reason why Fatal Blow was a thing in Mortal Kombat 11 was to give players who were about to die a move to pull off to basically win. That's the same with like with Mortal Kombat X, like you, you could per or even like Mortal Kombat 9 too, the one before that. You could you could like it had the X-ray system, which if that brought back in here, that would have been awesome too. I love the X-rays. I mean the Fatal Blow is I'd actually say it's better too, but uh, Mortal Kombat X9 had X-rays, which gave an advantage there too for you because you, I mean, that was a little different though. It didn't like change the trajectory of like, oh, I'm about to die here, but I could use this to save my ass. Mortal Kombat X9 had the, X, the X-ray system, which is like a power-up move. So like uh, you have the, the three-pronged bar at the bottom, and once you fill that gauge up, it, you can do the X-ray. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11, and with this one, you had the Fatal Blow, which is like, once your health bar gets, like, nearly depleted, you could use it. I mean, it's better, the Fatal Blow system, but this game had it so bad, <laughs> just because it's like, you, you could just tell when they're gonna do it, so there was no point. Like, it, it's so bad that you actually have to combo somebody to pull it off, which is just defeating the purpose of it. It's so stupid.